so here we are again with another of the series of 365 days of art this is day number six and today the prompt is to complete the shoal of colorful fish and it's a plain white page with some fish already drawn onto it um, and as you can see from this close-up um, the watercolor from the previous page which was the bowl of fruit has unfortunately bled through into this page so I'm going to have to try and do something about this and luckily it's blue and fish live in water which is also blue so I was thinking of um, using a blue background and I'm going to be using this liquid watercolor so I'm going to use three colors there's a blue color this is green and finally violet I didn't actually end up using the violet in the end so I've got my palette and there's some old blue dried paint so just putting a splash of there splash of the, the blue watercolour in there and then adding some water and then mixing it and then I'm using a Pentel water brush just to put down a very light wash of watercolour across the whole of the background. It's fairly uniform in colour at this point and I just wanted to um, quickly add in some um, background colour just to get started. So having done the background um, with the blue, I went in, um, I added a bit of green. Um, this was very wet, so um, it's made the paper quite soggy. The paper isn't really that brilliant for taking watercolour. I put some kitchen towel on either side to try and absorb some of the moisture. But as you can see, the paper is getting quite wet, especially on the left hand side where there's already something drawn on the other side. So just using my heat tool just to dry off that moisture and then I went back with my Derwent Academy watercolour pencils and then I've used um, several different shades of blue here just to um, try and blend in the edges of where some of the blue watercolour was quite dark and hard. And then having added the colours I then used a piece of damp kitchen towel because I was a bit reluctant to put any more water onto the paper because it was starting to peel a little bit um, and just used the damp paper towel to blend the colours. Then I've gone back with the Electroset Aqua Marker in green and I'm going to use this to draw some reeds or seaweed or seagrass at the bottom of the C and then going to make the, the, the strands wider. And then I decided to use some acrylic paint. This is just the Liquitex Basics in a, quite a bright coloured green so for that reason I'm adding some black in as well to try and make the colour a bit more realistic because it's quite bright and vibrant so just adding a little bit of water just to loosen the consistency of the paint there and then mixing it to make a darkish sort of seaweedy green colour. And then I simply painted over where I'd drawn the lines. It was quite translucent, I think maybe too much water and I was wondering why I'd put the Letraset pen on in the first place. It wasn't really needed. I could have just free-handed um, these strands of seaweed on in the first place. So going in with one main green colour first of all. And then I just darkened the colour down a little bit more with the black to just add a little bit of um, tone and texture to the strands of seaweed. Mm -hmm. 
and there's one thing I didn't realise, somehow I've ended up with a nasty blob of water right there in the middle on the left hand page, um, which I didn't notice when it happened, um, must have happened when I was mixing the green and black paints together with the water, um, but I suddenly spotted it as I was drawing the seaweed and then realised I was going to need to try and fix that. So I started off just using the heat tool to try and dry that off but realised that wasn't going to work. So I used the Derwent pencils again to um, add in a little bit of colour where it was missing from the background. So I used the paper towel again to try and blend that colour in. I've still got that really harsh um, blue line around the outside of the blob so had no choice but to go back in with a bit more of the darker blue watercolour to try and blend that out a little bit because it looked really ugly and I was really worried at this point that I was going to be um, that I was going to ruin my page but in the end it hasn't turned out too badly you can see the paper is quite badly um, damaged there where it's had a lot of water and a lot of colour put onto it so then I went in with some white acrylic paint because where I'd put the wash down over the top of the fish they had blue eyes and I didn't think that was quite right so I just popped their eyes back to white again. And then I decided I wanted to put some air bubbles coming from the fish's mouths and I decided I wanted to add a little bit of texture to this so I'm going to be using some embossing powders which if you haven't used them before they're a sort of a, a granulated plastic that you use a medium for them to stick to in the shape that you want. You can use a stamp pad or in this case I'm using this pen which is called an emboss it pen and it's by Ranger which I believe is the Tim Holtz but I could be wrong on that and it's just a clear pen. You can get coloured ones as well but this is the clear version um, and it's got the embossing ink the same as I've got in my stamp pad and I'm just drawing some little dots here to represent air bubbles coming from some of the fish's mouths. You have to work quite quickly because this dries very fast and especially under the studio lights um, and then you just dump some of the embossing powder over the top, wait for a couple of seconds and then shake off the excess which you can collect back up and tip back into the original pot so there's very little wastage here. And then once you've done that, you use a heat gun. It's got to be nice and hot, so a hairdryer might do it, but it might not get it hot enough. And you can see it melts the granules and then um, turns them into a sort of a shinier uh, black splodge. So did exactly the same with a pale blue. And you can see here the blue changing as I heat it up. It actually, it's quite magical to watch. And then finally I decided I wanted to add some silver. I thought this was going to be a darkish colour but as you can see it's actually quite brightly silver. And then what I did after that was um, just randomly did some dots all over the page to represent some other little uh, water bubbles that might just be randomly floating about under the water with the fish and then sprinkled the white embossing powder over the top and heated that up in exactly the same way. And then the last, one of the last things I did was got a black Posca pen, paint pen. Um, this one has a fine tip and I wanted to just use this to go back in and give the fish the pupils in their eyes back again. Lastly I decided I wanted to add some stones or rocks to the bottom of the pages to just draw it in a little bit and make it look a bit more finished so I just used an ordinary um, sketching pencil just to sketch out the outlines of some of the stones wanted to make them fairly um, un-uniform so some big ones some small ones and then using four different tones of acrylic paint this is burnt sienna followed by raw sienna and then there's raw umber and burnt umber, so four brownish tones. So put a tiny amount of each of those colours into my paint palette. I just used them neat, I didn't add any water to them at all. 
started off with the raw sienna, which is the lightest colour, just to draw some of the stones in. Then I use the darker browns to colour in some of the other stones. And then I just used my finger just to smudge over the top because where the acrylic had dried there was a little bit of texture so I was able to just apply some of the colour and it just created some highlights and some shadows here and there to make the stones look a little bit more realistic. And then lastly I went back in with the Posca paint pen, the black fine tipped one, just to add some veins. Um, and lines to the seaweed strands and there's the finished piece I'm really pleased with how it turned out despite the messy page with the extra water um, I didn't think at the beginning it was going to look any good but I'm actually really pleased with how it's turned out I um, like that I've used lots of different media in this piece I like mixing media um, and I'm pleased with the way that it's turned out I think the idea was to add more fish and um, that was what the artist intended but um, I just wanted to add a background to it so I'm very pleased with how it's turned out and then finally I've got a question um, I'm a bit late to the party here but I have been watching um, the Reckless Journal series which has been created by Sarah Lynn her channel is called So Craftastic and I've really enjoyed watching her videos um, and I thought I'm sure I've got a copy of this book somewhere so I had a look and I've managed to find it so my question is should I start a new series alongside this 365 days of art to do a couple of random pages from the Reckless Journal um, it might be something I do just every so often or it's something I could do every week let me know what you think um, you would prefer to see me do um, by leaving a comment in the section below. If you haven't seen any of my previous 365 Days of Art videos, then I will put a link below. They're all in a playlist. Um, and if you don't want to miss any of my videos, please subscribe and you can visit my Etsy shop there with the link. And here are some links to some of my other videos I've done, including some Knit Crate unboxing ones. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.